I'd like to follow along uh, Ephesians chapter 1, Romans chapter 4, and Galatians chapter 4. Ephesians 1, Romans 4, Galatians 4. This morning we're in the state of Florida, and the question is how many of us are in the state of blessedness? It's probably not something that we consider, is it? If you thought this past week, oh, I'm, I'm in the state of blessedness. Well, why should I ask that question? And the reason is, is because it's in the Bible. And it's something that uh, you can consider being in that state. Let's start with Ephesians chapter one in verse three. And this is the verse that we all know, but blessed, it says blessed, be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. You notice there's one word there that uh, shows up twice, B-L-E-S-S-E-D, and I think those are two different words. The first word, blessed, is, is how I would pronounce it, and that's a state. That's a state of being, and then the second time the spelling of that word is used in the verse, it's a verb. So blessed, God is blessed. He's blessed. He's, he's, in, he's in that state because he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now look at Romans chapter 4 and we get a better understanding <clears throat> of what blessed is. We won't go there, but in Psalms it says, blessed is the man whom God hath chosen. Blessed. It's a state and we've been chosen. So we should be in that state. But look at Romans chapter 4, verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. Verse 3. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Verse 6. Even as David also describeth the blessedness, the state that we should be in. Why? Of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works. Verse 7. Saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. I've been thinking about this, uh, these three verses for a while, uh, six, seven, and eight, and I wanna try to, you know, my goal is to memorize things that I'm thinking about, and I've got a way for you to memorize those three, and it's ISI. Blessed is the man ISI. And, and look, look at it, ISI. This is why you should be blessed. You should be in that state whom God, uh, as verse seven saying, blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven. Are your iniquities forgiven? Well, if they are, you should, you should be in that state of uh, 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 being blessed. Uh, and whose sins are covered. Are your sins covered? Well, yes, they are. If you're saved, your sins are covered. You should be in the state of, of being of, of blessedness. And then verse 8, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. So here's the ISI. If you want to try to remember this this week without looking it up, the I, you should be in the state of blessedness because um, iniquity is forgiven. That's the I. S, sins are covered. And I, imputed sin not your sins are not imputed so those three things and I, I i suggest and urge and challenge you to think about those things this week so galatians chapter four so now we've determined that we're all in the state of blessedness right we're in the state of florida but we're also in the state of blessedness and this is probably again something that we don't consider but according to these verses we are there we should be there and if we're there it's something that we should consider Galatians chapter 4, I love this question in verse 15, Paul is dealing with the Galatians who had issues with uh, legality. 
Another word for legality is religion. They understood that they were saved by grace. They had all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. However, they wanted to be religious about it. They wanted to do more to add to their salvation. They wanted to do works based upon their own strength for God. So Paul says, well, you know, based upon that, in verse 15 says, where is the blessedness that ye spake of? In other words, they were talking about it. They knew what they had. So the question for you and for me and for us this morning is, where is the blessedness? Paul asked him, where is it? Where is, you, where is the blessedness? And look, look what he says as he, as he goes down through there. He says in verse 15, For I bear you record that if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. Am I, there, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that, they, that ye might affect them. Who are they? Who's he talking about? Well, he's talking about grace perverters. There are those out there, and you might be guilty of it yourself, you pervert the grace of God. You add something to it, you turn left from it, you turn right to it, you, you don't stick to the grace of God. And it says, uh, they zealously affect you. There are things that affect you uh, from your grace standing, from your grace position, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. If, and, and it just makes me think about the question, and I think all of us can agree with it, there are probably people in our lives, whether they be relatives, friends, coworkers, or whatever, you try to give them a dose of truth, and what do they do? They, they may talk, they, they uh, either talk about you behind your back, or they just exclude you. You know, if, if you try to bring up something about the truth of the Word of God again, they're going, I had a relative tell me, let's leave God out of it. So they exclude you. Verse 18, but it, but it is good to be zealously affected. That's the, the impact of grace in your life. Always in a good thing, the good thing of grace, and not only when I am present with you. So that's it. That's, uh, that's blessedness, and it's something that, uh, that I hope we think about this week, uh, that, that we should be in that state based upon who we are uh, and all that we have in Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for another day of your grace. We thank you for the preaching this morning, for the edification of the believer, refreshed spirits, and the fellowship that we have and enjoy. And in Christ Jesus' name, we thank you and pray. Amen.